I'm activating my vagal nerve and healing myself. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Have a nice day. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, little baby. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I have so much new in front of me. I went to Sephora this morning after getting a blowout. Who is she? I am wearing a dress. I, my nails are done. So I am feeling like today calls for unexpected glamor. And I was able to pick up the new Pat McGrath Star Wars palette. You guys, I didn't know that I was gonna be so into this, but seeing it in store was like a whole different thing. Yo. Look at this, look at this. When you open it, you hear the theme song to Star Wars. Is it just me? Does anyone else hear this? I went to the display and that was like, dun, dun, dun. it was like in my head. I'm not even a big Star Wars fan. I just kind of think it was cool. The colors are super beautiful. Ooh, shiny, shiny, shiny. I actually think that this right here, the smaller Star Wars palette, yes, I got both of them. I did. This one is even prettier in my opinion. We have, uh, who are you? I don't even know the names of these characters. R2-D2's homeboy? Who? Which one is this? Anyway, you open this up and it is just a treasure trove of beautiful, neutral Pat McGrath shadows. And I just thought this was something I needed. I do have a new primer that I wanna test out from Stila. I'm gonna put this on half the face and then do Tarte on the other half because I'm just still convinced that this is the very best primer out there, the Tarte Smoothing Primer, we're gonna go over here with this guy a little aggressively. We're gonna go right here. That blurs you so quickly. This is kind of the same texture, this new one from Stila, and it is a blurring stick. The packaging kind of reminds me a little bit of Westman Atelier, like this kind of pop-off top thing. It's really, really pretty. Did I even announce what we're doing here? We're just playing with brand new viral launches, new things that people cannot stop talking about online that made me literally go to the store and buy, even though I just got new PR. Like I'm like, well, I didn't get this in PR. And like, I j there are some things that I just really wanted to try out. So we're just gonna do it. We're just trying it out. And I spent my cash on majority of this. I'll let you know if something was sent. Um, but this one I bought myself. This feels nice. You're able to kind of layer it up, which is a little bit weird for this kind of a blurring primer. We're gonna go underneath the eye really quickly with something that I have never tried. This is from Loon and Aster. I got this at Blue Mercury and this is the Hydra Glow Under Eye Brightening Corrector. We've got vitamin C and E licorice extract, vegan squalene, and hyaluronic acid. So I am hoping that this will make me look like I got so much sleep. It's not a concealer, it is just a corrector, brightener. I don't know, it sounded like a good idea. Hello, new BFF, that just did something. Wow, oh my gosh. Okay, so what we're gonna do is a newer technique and I talked about this on both Snapchat because I am back on Snapchat. I will link it in the description box below. Uh, Snapchat is probably where I make the biggest fool of myself. Like I kind of give myself permission to go and just be whatever, but I did share this beauty tip on IG and Snapchat and that is the less is more approach. I have been very mesmerized by the whole clean girl makeup. And the other day when I did this technique, I felt like I was having such a good skin day. I feel, oh, I need the brush that I used, even though we're being so fabulous today, you guys, and we're like, Pat McGrath, I just went to Sephora. The brush that I used with this new Dior foundation, by the way, this is the Forever Skin Glow by Dior. I am in the shade 2WP, which actually, shocker, this actually matches my skin right now, even though I am, mm paler than I would like. I need the cheap drugstore brush that I used to do this technique. I will be right back. Okay. This is the brush that I am obsessed with. This is a setting brush, so technically for powder, but there's something about like the dense but fluffy nature about it that really, really works. Okay, so I just have a little foundation and a lid. 
we're gonna go in and just kind of initially go over the areas that I want coverage. So my goal is to keep most of the skin bare. And at first it kind of freaks me out like, no, I need my shellac, you know? But I'm getting to the point where I'm like, this could potentially be aging me that I am not willing to ungrip from the full coverage, lots of powder kind of a thing. So I kind of wait for it to get a little bit set on the skin. I kind of put it on areas and then go in and blend once it's kind of tackified on the skin a little bit. And this brush is so soft that it doesn't take too much away, but it just blends it in really nicely. I do have a goal in mind. Like there is a treatment that I do want to go and get for my hyperpigmentation. Cause that honestly is maybe one of the big reasons that I do wear more full coverage is because I don't like the spots everywhere and the pigmentation. Otherwise, I don't think I'd wear as much makeup to be honest. So really the idea is to think, how am I blending this in where I'm covering a few things, but it still just looks like my skin. I am gonna go in with a new concealer. I don't know how full coverage or how this will sit on the skin, how this will work out, but this is the new one from Urban Decay. This is the Quickie, and this is a up to 24 hour wear multi-use concealer. Now I got the shade 41NN. This might be way too dark. What was I thinking? <sighs> this is why like sometimes you go into Ulta Let's try it on the face. We'll just try it right here. Honestly, the fluorescent lighting can play you so hard. I'm fully in natural lighting, like in front of a window right now with a small ring light, but it looked a lot different in the store. Okay, um, we're not using that. Uh, so I know I'm like, oh, let's do, let's do really natural. Let's go in with some shape tape. Let's just do like a dabble do you and see what happens. Boom, boom, that was bigger than a dab. It's okay. All right, I'm in a better headspace. Now we are gonna go in with a little bit of cream bronzer. This is in Golden Tan, and this is from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I was having such a nostalgic moment in Sephora where I was like, I haven't used much of their product at all in years, but I used to love everything, everything. And this was the first trip to Sephora that I was like, you know, I kind of wanna try some of their glosses, wanna try some of their things again. And this is their cream bronzer. It's a matte finish, so it has kind of a powder dry down similar to the Beauty Blender, their cream duos that they came out with. It kind of has a similar feel to that. I'm excited to see how this works out. I want to go in with one of my favorite brushes for cream products. This is the Dior 16. And I'm just going to blot this on. Mm, I don't know. It might be a little too, I don't know. Why is that not working for me? Ah, now we gotta even it out. Okay. So this is definitely not love at first sight. Uh, it's not bad, but it's not as good as I was hoping. You know, I did go into Sephora for the new Rare Beauty highlighter that everybody is talking about. Sold out. That is the first item in the beauty community in a hot minute that has made everybody kind of go in a tizzy. And everyone's like, it's the most amazing thing ever. And I really want to get my hands on it as well. I'm going to try and order it online. Do I have something for my brows? Ah, I know. Okay, this is like, this is the secret sauce. This is from Walmart and I know, I know, it feels like, oh, they don't belong together. This is the Naked and Famous, kind of a weird name for a palette, uh, but this is a gorgeous palette and the browns in here have the right kind of stiffness that they make for like an incredible 
Rao powder. The glitter is pretty good too, but I just, I love the brown powders in here. Okay, what you wanna do though, I normally have powder underneath my eyes for any fallout and we just have not got there yet because I got distracted. I always take a paper towel and I'll kind of get the excess off on a paper towel if something is a little bit too powdery, but at the same time, it doesn't make it bad because you kind of want that powdery quality, especially in brows. It kind of clings to your brow hairs better. And literally, can I please not have Instagram real songs stuck in my head? Like I need help. I've complained about this before. It is progressively getting worse. Um, okay, so terrible, but also good. I downloaded TikTok. I did it. I had downloaded it once before. I deleted it because I saw too many graphic videos. Like literally my algorithm was giving me, it was like serving UFO fantasy nightmare content. Uh, and then like random children being kidnapped. And like it literally, I had a night where I was crying on my kitchen floor because I was served a really disturbing video. And at first I was like, oh, I really, I'm curious how this ends. And it bothered me so badly for so long that I was like, I'm not doing it. Like I, I'm not doing TikTok. Talk. When I hurt my neck, I re-downloaded it. And it's kind of like the algorithm was like, okay, we're gonna be nice to you this time because it is serving me really beautiful, wonderful content and actually is inspiring me and making me potentially want to do more day in the life type stuff. Like I kind of, for the first time, I was like, oh my gosh, I get it. But also I like to talk, you know, like I like to talk and I still like kickback long form content. So if I ever do the day in the life, I don't see myself stopping doing this business anytime soon either. Cause there's something that I really love about being here and just being free to take my time. And wow, this is not a good brow day. I was bragging about you and what happened? Oh, I know what happened. I went all in with on tour instead of warm up and on tour. So they're like a little bit too dark. Leave me in the comments, how long does it take you to do your brows? Be honest. I'm gonna take a little bit of the foundation from that lid and try to do a little cleanup here. Now for her next move, we are gonna go in to the new Soft Matte Advanced Perfecting Powder from NARS. I literally was staring at these top shelf of the NARS display, new, new, new. Just did a quick little swipe with my finger and I was like, mm -hmm, yep, we're getting this. It is so velvety soft. Like already I wanna give it a thumbs up, we gotta put it on. But it has such nice texture and coverage. This has like a lot of pigment. I feel like it will be beautifully brightening underneath the eye. I like that thin compact. Look at that, how it's just like, it just, ah, oh, it just feels nice. Going on in. Okay, that's amazing. Oh. <gasps> That is beautiful. That does not even look like powder on the skin. It's giving a little bit of coverage. It is blurring my pores. The skin for wearing pretty much like next to no foundation looks really nice. Okay, so we're gonna now blush up the cheeks. I love a lot of blush, whether it is on trend or not. I'm just like rosy me right up. I love it. But if you're doing the clean girl makeup trend, if you're doing the less is more trend, I just have to say, that a really pretty bright cheek just makes the whole thing come together. This is from Rowan. This is the shade Pink Dust. This is a cream. And yes, I'm putting it right on top of powder and I don't even care. So what I do with this is I usually put it on kind of heavy handed and it's not perfectly blended around the edges. I kind of like to let it sink in. It seems to almost sink into the skin a little bit. When I'm done doing whatever next steps I do, I'll go back in and do a little bit of this underneath the eye, kind of brighten up, clean up that edge. And then if I need to, I'll go underneath a little bit. But I want this area and this area to stay very flushed, like she just went for a run. She is blushing. I like that kind of a look. Now we're gonna go in with a little bit of Charlotte Tilbury. Now this is something I was sent in PR. We have the Pillow Talk Glow. 
We're gonna go in with a fan brush. This is from Stilazzi. This is a L314. I'm gonna go boop, boop, boop right here. And we're just gonna glow up the high points. I do wanna pop on a little lip. We're gonna go in with Rare Beauty. This is the Kind Words Crayon in Worthy. So I don't know what awards show it was, but Selena Gomez recently went to an awards show and people were relentlessly body shaming her. And it's the most ridiculous, appalling thing I have seen online when it comes to just like the memes and crazy things that people were doing to put her against Hailey Bieber. I was just shocked. I'm like, I'm sorry, what year are we living in? Because I thought we didn't do this anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like ridiculous that because of her, um, I think she has lupus medication that she's on has made her face puffier and she's gained some weight. And I just was shocked because for a while, you guys, I really haven't been in entertainment news or watching anything like that. I kind of play with the makeup, do YouTube film, and then just kind of keep it to myself, do my own thing. And I haven't really been immersed in celebrity culture so much, but I was just shocked by that. I'm like, yo, like, when are we gonna learn? Like, this is not okay. And then who else did I, I was talking with someone recently about old episodes of America's Next Top Model, cause I watched that growing up and I'm like, yo, no wonder we have so many crazy body dysmorphia issues. It is so insane. The things that they say to these girls about their bodies, like I can't even believe that I would watch that and like not even think that it was a problem at all. And it is just so eye-opening. I think that we all need to be kinder to one another. Don't be that person that goes online and projects your like evil on the internet. It just doesn't even make any sense. Yeah, I just, I felt bad for Selena Gomez. I was like, that is just the rudest. It's so rude. I do have a gloss that I wanna pop on. Actually, let's put on a little bit of Charlotte Tilbury underneath it. This is catwalking. I'm just gonna kinda do this. Like, we're putting on our lipstick now. Sometimes if you just move your shoulders, it just makes it even better. Uh, okay, that's pretty. All right, we're gonna go in with the Star Wars lip gloss in Bronze Venus. I didn't wanna buy this and then I swatched it on my hand and I'm like, mm changed my mind really quickly. It is so sparkly and like duochrome. This is a delicious gloss. Look at that. Oh my stars. And now we need eyeshadow. What are we feeling? What are we gonna do? Are we gonna go for it? Are we gonna be timid and tame? I think that this is super stunning. Orangey, kind of goes with the nails a little bit. I do wanna see, oh my gosh, that is the softest. Are you kidding me? No, we're using that. Okay, so, wow, hello. I feel like being a little bit dangerous. I've been doing this new thing recently where I just kind of go crazy on the lid first. So we're gonna take a flat, fluffy brush into this bronze shade. I know, it could be a mistake. Let's dive off the deep end together. This is Letitia Lamac SFS, just a flat, fluffy brush. And I'm gonna smooth out this crease. We're gonna go in. I'm gonna go in with a Letitia Lamac FF6 back into the main palette. We're gonna go into this neutral brown matte shade and just kind of go into the crease. I wanna do a shimmery smoky eye that looks pretty smudgy.
I am gonna take my fingertip on this brown that is more matte in the smaller palette and just kind of emphasize that outer edge. Not go up too high. I mean, Pat McGrath shadows are definitely going to blend. You know what I'm saying? Let's do some quick swatches. Let's just do it right here, and then we'll do some arm swatches as well. So there's an initial immediate look, but like, do we have to have it? Mm. If you're a Star Wars fan and you're like, this collection is just too cute to pass up, then I would say go for it. Otherwise, I think she has other palettes that I like more. I just got back into her makeup after doing my full like clear out of so much stuff because of my crazy eyes. Um, I purchased one of her larger palettes. Again, they're so expensive, but there's something really stunning and special about the way that she does the more shimmery shades. No one does it like Pat McGrath. You know what I'm saying? I am I'm gonna go in back to this palette right here. Okay, I'm gonna go in with this bronzy shade, right? Ooh, that's pretty. Ooh, actually I super duper love that more than I thought I would. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little bit of liner and lash, and then we're gonna go in with some glimmer on top. I really like doing that just so you know exactly where to place the shimmery shades. I find it's easier to open up the eye when you're going a little bit higher and everything is already balanced and done. So I'm trying to be kind to myself more recently is a goal. I had for the past like year intentionally, I know this sounds super crazy, but I was like, I don't wanna be a selfish person and I'm gonna really like reject self-love. I feel like I've stressed myself out a little bit. So I'm kind of back in this place where I really feel that we need to be kind to ourselves so that we can then be kind to others. It doesn't work otherwise. So I am trying to treat myself a little bit more, be a little bit softer on myself. It's really funny that downloading TikTok was like this weird kind of break in my psyche. I don't know. Um, one of the videos that was served up to me was different nervous system, somatic stretching exercises. And I started doing them and it started helping. Like I was having radical, like crazy pain down my neck that radiated to the middle of my back, down to my sciatica, and then to my pelvic bone. And I'm watching this video and this girl's like, that means that you have prolonged trauma that needs to be released, that your body's holding on to. Let me get a liner. All right, we're gonna go in with the Barbarella Brown from Charlotte Tilbury, and I'm just gonna line the upper lash line and kind of smudge it out maybe a little bit. So anyway, I was like, well, gosh, I've been like two weeks with that exact pain, which also is a little bit weird because I'm like, why am I getting this? Like, was I complaining too much with my phone out and like TikTok somehow knew like, this is what you need, you know? Because I started being like breathing and like, you know, massaging my neck and doing all the things and like moving my hips after I do a workout, which I just finally started working out again. Cause I was like man down for like two weeks with this neck thing. If you follow me on IG, you know. Yeah, have any of you guys ever experienced anything like that? Like such a trip. My sister's a nurse, you know, nurse Erica. And she's like, wow, that is wild. She was talking about how, you know, the body is so connected one thing to the other. And I think there is definitely like an emotional connection to like how we muscle through things in life and how maybe we just feel like we have to push through. And so we kind of subconsciously tell our body like, I'll deal with you later. Well, if you do that long enough, your body's like, and I'll deal with you now. And like, you're gonna not be able to move, you know, so. I'm kind of going through that. If you guys have any recommendations for different stretching or whatever to do with like loosening up all the neck tension and head tension, let me know because I am trying to educate myself right now on that. Anyone else though really feel like when you were online, you're like, am I in the Truman Show? Literally, it felt like I was scrolling. It was like, do you have a pain on one side of your neck that radiates down to the center of your spine to your sciatica? I literally, I was like, yes. Yes, me, and it was the freaking weirdest thing. All right, I'm going on the waterline, we're just doing it. Ooh, actually I have a different pencil I wanted to use in the waterline, gosh darn dang it. Okay, maybe we'll put it on top of this. Okay, this is from Luna Naster. This shade 
is so incredible. I have repurchased this liner so many times. This is copper and it does not look copper, but it's just one of those like really flattering for blue or blue green eyes. Love it. Just chipped my nail. Don't love it. P.S. I am wearing a new polish that I just picked up from Target. This is the shade Picante. Love that name. Love the brush on Olive in June. Like you guys, she's learning how to paint her own nails. Wow. I like it. I just snagged my nail though. We're going to go into this Bare Minerals Maximalist. This was sent to me in PR. This formula for sensitive eyes, Tati approved. We got a little something here that needs to dry and then I'll kind of scrape it off. I am gonna go in with Drugstore Lashes. These are the 424 Naked Lashes from Ardell. I like this look. I feel like it's a little bit not my favorite color palette. The lips, I would probably want to be a little bit more peachy, like a little brighter. It just, for some reason, they're a little dark for me, which sounds really ridiculous. Oh, you know what I do have? I have a different gloss that we can try out. I do have this from Dior. This was front and center in Sephora. This is the Lip Maximizer. This is a lip plumping gloss. I have a love-hate relationship with those. So let's just for fun, why not? We're having a very uh, let's be extra kind of a day. So let's go in with it. Minty. Do we like it? I don't know. Patrick Ta feels gloppy in the most wonderful way. It's like very thick. This feels thin and oily. It's got a kick. It's got a minty something. I can feel it. It's not uh, spicing me up, but it's there. It's doing something. I'm gonna go in with Golden Quartz Chubbier Pencil from Charlotte Tilbury, and I'm gonna put this in the waterline. I know I already have stuff in the waterline, but I feel I just want a little bronzier. Like I want it to be a little more light reflective and this will do the trick. Ooh, the eyes, oh my gosh. Okay, so now we're gonna go into this shade right here and just put that in the inner corner, brighten things up. And then I'm gonna go in to that bronzy coppery shade, the first one I swatched. I'm gonna tilt back and just pop it right there. See, right up here. There we go. And that just really opened the eyes. That just kind of gave it that finishing touch that I was after. Blend out the edge just a little bit. If you feel like you need to go over the lash line again with liner, you can. Somehow I thought we were gonna leave here today with a very natural look and Pat McGrath and all the goodness in these palettes just took over and here we are with a very glamorous, beautiful, smudged out, smoky eye. I have not been into literally smudging out even the lower lash line, tight lining, all of that in such a long time, but I'm loving it. These shadows are amazing. Do I think this one is worth the hefty price tag? Probably not. I'm sorry, Pat McGrath, if you're a collector, go for it. I actually really love this one though, this mini palette. I will continue to be reaching for this one. It is so good. I do like this new Dior gloss. The gloss from Pat McGrath, I'd probably put on top of like a more nudie peachy kind of a thing. The Forever Skin Glow, love so much. Did not really love the Anastasia uh, Golden Tan Cream Bronzer. I'll have to play with it more. This powder is so nice. Oh my gosh. It's coming with me everywhere. I love it. Um, the highlighter from Charlotte Tilbury, pretty nice. Not like making me go, wow, amazing, amazing. Um, I more am in this like remembrance with her liners that are super good. And then this primer actually did a nice job, the Stila primer. I still think the Tarte might be better. 
but it's not bad. So everything said and done, I'm gonna kinda mist the skin real quick. I almost forgot to do this. Everything said and done, it's a good makeup day. What do you guys think? I just kinda wanted to try the new things and hang out. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed, ring the bell, do the things. Notifications are a little bit wonky lately. I am here Monday and Thursday at 10 a.m. PST. Come hang out with me again. I love you all so much. Go and have a good one and find me on Snapchat. I am back on there being ridiculous and I'm also on IG. I'll have everything in the description box below. All right, I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Mwah.